I don't know why I'm not just having fun with Hey y'all, we're gonna make a piece crane. Right on. First off, it's uh, quarantine season, so you might not really have any origami paper on hand. If you go to the art supply store, I suggest you get some. It's cheap and it makes for folding really fun. But this is cool to use uh, things you got around. I got this, uh, this magazine. Ooh, this fun bit. Um, We've got plenty of projects you can do with old magazines if you got them around, but it doesn't really matter. Now you got the sheet and it's not a square. Um, so we need to make it square first. So the thing to do is you take the short side and you line it up with the long one. And when you're folding, the thing to do is make sure you line it up real good before you crease it. Because you can't really uncrease paper. You can kind of redirect the crease, but you can't really undo it. So make sure you get it how you want it before you do it, and then you come back. Oh wait, no, 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 we need a square, right? So as it's over there, we fold it over there. There's this piece over here, and you turn it over. And you can fold it back like such, and it'll line up evenly there. That'll be a right triangle, and because the two sides are the same, it's actually a 45-45 right triangle. And that's when it becomes really important, it's an isosceles right triangle. One of the most famous triangles it is, if not the most famous. Anyway, when it's also also, also half a square. <laughs> it's half, half, also, it's half a square, you know. Uh, well, we can see that. And that's where the diagonal, and then that's kind of where this whole square root of two stuff came about. We can actually see it here. It was kind of cool. But we come back, and you know, you pull it back and forth. Because this piece right here that we made in the square, that's the one I'm going to tear off. You might, you might lick it, you might do whatever. And you want to start slowing down to take your time on things. We're going to make the bird base. This, those two main start origami, uh, the bird base is this one. And as uh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to try and tell what, a little bit else I know about history. So. Fold it like that, and then you do it like so. The other cutty corner was origami pretty much started as soon as paper started, which is Chinese. Something like 600 AD. Here, something like that. Um, and then, oh. Purchase. So do that, and then we're going to turn it over before we do it the hamburger or hot dog way. Which is funny to say it this way because there's no one or the other. It's just the side to sides. But definitely turn it over. It'll make a difference. And notice how I'm lining it up before I crease it. Right. Open it up. And we do it the other way too. Same direction. Line it up. Somewhere, but it's it'll be okay before I crease it. And now we got it like so. Obviously, there's lots of geometry with the two. We could talk about it all day long, but we're just kind of focus on trying to make a bird. And the way you want to see how it's kind of poking up like this, as I see a square here, and that's the thing we're trying to find for the bird base. That we get to, like, like so, and it should close up nicely. One more time. If it does it, you got it right. You might have it flipped over and backwards. So we got that. And we're going to take, you got to notice, we're going to focus with the bottom side. It's got a little over. Not the top. We're going to take a side. We line this line up with the one in the middle. But, so the Chinese developed it. And they kept it, like, ferociously secret. So during the era of the Silk Roots, which is where, like, when the Romans and stuff bought all kinds of silk and fun from China uh, via Persia and, and India and Tibet and, and all kinds of things. They would also, they really like to get paper. And we're going to do that on all the sides. And the Chinese would not let that go, but also towards the north, uh, east, towards Korea. Uh, they, it did get into Korea. I mean, that, that they do share a lot of lines there. And they definitely did want it to get to the Japanese, but there was a Korean monk 
fruit of smog. I was familiar with the Japanese and there was people in the Japanese culture. So now we're going to take this part, fold it like so to give it a This here we're doing it to give it actually a crease. Converted with him and he brought with him the knowledge of making paper. Now, and the, the, the passage of making paper and origami from since then. Oh, talking and not even so <laughs> we have it like this and this is kind of the key spot of a bird base this is this is where you pay attention that's all the back forth we got like that we have we open all these up and you're gonna take this top one and go all the way back to that crease that you made and part of the trick a lot of times on this one is you gotta Fold back those creases that you've done earlier towards the top. And sometimes it doesn't quite want to work out, so take your time. And if you get too frustrated, just bottle it up and start again. Which you don't do, you give up. Culture. And early on, there was, became this legend that if you folded a thousand of these cranes, these peace cranes, a thousand of them, you could get a wish. Now, we're going to do the next one. At this point, this point, if you do the next set of folds, you'll end up with like the normal crane. The standard peace crane. And it's much, it's very pretty. And if you don't, but if you follow through, you'll end up with a fluffy one. It's not quite as pretty. It doesn't have quite the same lines, I think. But you might have it. But it does flap. That's cool. So if you don't, if you want to do this, you don't do this next step. If you do want it to look like this, you do do this next step. Now, if you're doing piece cranes, then you got to do this next step. And you take this side, you fold it in, like such. Well, that's quite a good, good uh, legend. And it came that the US decided that it needed to, to drop atomic bombs on, on Japan and kill like lots of people all at one go. It doesn't really matter whether or not that, that was the right decision or not in some ways, because it, it was a decision to happen. So we must just learn from everything we can. Like most of the parents and everyone died in Hiroshima and, and those kids who just kind of grew up and, and one of them was Sadak Sadako Sazaki. I had to double check. I wrote her name down but it's, it's not my native. So I, I'm definitely probably jacked it up. But she caught leukemia because of the, the bombs. Now, uh, uh, this next step, that was the step you would do if you're going to have the normal crane and not do if you're going to have the fluffy crane. Here you're gonna make you're gonna do some both sides and fold it up. It doesn't quite matter your angle. I generally do it sort of lined up with that. And the inner part goes all the way to, to where it separated it. Uh, and on each side you're gonna do what's called an inside reverse fold, which is a cool name. You open it up. sort of reverse on itself. <clears throat> and it goes up, boom. And here, it's fun because it always seems like it might not work and if you get it, it just kind of falls into place. Here, you, if it's, you might have to get these sort of worked in there. Uh, the piece crane is not the easiest thing that they of the origami. It really is something to do and you always have to pay attention to it. One of these head ones, the tail, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I tend to personally try and figure out which one has more messed up. Like this one's torn here. I want to make that one the head and fold it down. So 
so this may or may not have been a good idea to choose the torn one. We'll see. It'll do though. There you go. Now she, Zaki, she caught it and she had some really good dear school friends. One of our missions before her goal was to make her a thousand cranes and I don't know if she actually completed it or not, but her school friends carried on her legacy before she, they, they still do it and, it's, and they bring it all around the world. And it's really aimed at to the youth and the idea that for peace you're, you're making these, they're just made for peace and the process of doing it is, it seems silly in a weird way, or not silly, but very minimal. It's just a sheet of paper, but you do them, you know? I have not done a thousand of them yet, but each time I really do complete one, there's something that does kind of feel better about it, and there you go. You got a crane.